we're going to go through Zscaler browser isolation for Zscaler for users. So we're going to start in the administration portal for isolation. So admin.isolation.zscaler.com. And you can see we've got uh, two different profiles, one for ZIA and one for ZPA. Um, the starting point, we're going to go to administration and root certificates because we need to have uploaded the root certificate in the same way that we do um, SSL inspection and we need to push that down to the client. We need to have the SSL certificate, the root CA or the Zscaler root CA installed to be able to do SSL inspection within isolation. You can also here configure end user notifications if we wanted to update this uh, banner from the default. So we go back to isolation profiles. I've got an, you can add a new or we've got an existing one here called Zscaler isolation. Um, we select the certificate that's going to be deployed into that um, containerized browser and we select which of the um, tenants we want to locate in. In my case, I've selected Washington, Frankfurt and London as well as Oregon um, and I should be redirected to the closest node, London, um, and it will point traffic through the Zscaler cloud using the um, associated pack file. Uh, from a security controls perspective, I've disabled all upload and download and copy and paste and the ability to print from isolation, so it's entirely read only. Um, any local links will be, or any links in the page that I click, will be rendered locally in the browser, so I'll return to the local browser. Um, and from a user experience, it's going to deploy that, uh, that um, uh, the header page and uh, the default end user notification to indicate that I've moved into isolation. From Zscaler private access, similar configuration. Um, I need the Zscaler uh, or my private certificate installed in there. Again, I'm going to be accessing private applications, private web applications through Zscaler private access in the isolated container. So if they're encrypted, I need to have my custom certificates installed there so that I don't get any certificate errors inside the container. Um, in this case, I'm going to use London, Frankfurt and Washington as my tenants. Um, obviously, the profile is enabled. And from security controls, again, I'm isolating. I'm not allowing copy and paste, upload or download or printing from the isolated container and the same user experience. So once I've got these configured, I can go ahead and use them in my Zscaler Internet Access tenant. And very simply here, if I go to my URL cloud filtering policy, I've got a URL filtering rule that says for news and media, I want to isolate. And we can click edit that. There's plenty of different criteria for which I can um, amend my filtering rule but the action on this specifically is isolate, and from the drop-down, I select the specific isolation profile. So obviously by having multiple isolation profiles, some allowing copy and paste, some allowing, allowing upload and download, I can have different profiles associated with different filtering rules. So we activate the rule. Activation is completed and now so if I open up my Safari browser and I go to um, CNN.com I get redirected into isolation because it'll trigger that rule. I get the browser pop up to say I'm moved into isolation, the usual cookie warnings and now everything is isolated within the container. As you can see it's screen scraped and the URL is isolation.zscaler.com. So how does this look from private access perspective? So let's sign into Zscaler private access. And similarly, I have my application segments. I've got my Apache segment here, which is defined as browser-based access with inspection. And if I come across to my isolation policy, I'm saying I'm going to allow isolation. We edit the rule. 
we see isolation for the Apache application when it's coming from a web browser. So we only isolate external users coming through Zscaler private access, browser-based access. So if I exit my client and behave as if I'm an external user, and I now come into access apache.welshgeek.net. In fact, we'll open a private browser. We'll go to apache.welshgeek.net. We'll go through the redirection to authenticate for browser-based access. This will trigger multi-factor authentication on my phone by Azure AD. So I click approve that on my phone. And now I'm allowed into Zscaler private access and now I am isolated. Again, I get the pop-up and you can see that we get the screen scraped um, and I'm isolated both from a client perspective and from the um, application as well as the inspection controls that happen to prevent um, app um, infection or app data protection. I can come back and I can edit this rule. We could bypass isolation and click save. I come back to my browser and go to apache.welshgeek.net now. And you see I'm back to browser-based access where I can copy and paste and the URL is clearly browser-based access. If we come across to Zscaler Internet Access and look at administration cloud application, um, if we come across to Zscaler Internet Access and we go to administration identity proxy settings, I have no cloud applications configured here. But what I can do is add a cloud application and I can make decisions on how the identity is controlled and what to do for unmanaged devices. So there are a number of cloud applications in here, Salesforce, Box, M365, ShareFile. I'm gonna do other cloud apps, and as a demonstration, I'm going to configure Zscaler's identity proxy for unmanaged devices to authenticate for Zscaler private access. So how does that work? If I come to Administration, IDP Configuration, Zscaler supports SAML SSO for administrators. So I add an IDP configuration, and I will say Zscaler Internet Access Identity Proxy. And I'll select Admin SSO for the domain WelshGeek.net. I click Next, and I can see the, the metadata. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the service provider URL, the ACS URL, and I will paste that into the ACS URL here. And then I will take the entity ID here, and I will paste that to the entity ID. We need SAML response signing, so we'll select the response signing certificate, and we're just going to trans we're just going to pass through the identity because I'm already mryan at welshgeek.net. I don't have any group details. And I say that anybody with a managed device, meaning they're coming through Zscaler Internet Access, will be proxied directly. And unmanaged devices will be isolated using the ZIA isolation profile. So at that point, I can click Save. At that point, I need to give it a name. Zscaler Private Access Admin SSO. I click Save. and the policy has been created and I can activate. Now I need to download the certificate. And I come, what I'll do is I'll copy the identity proxy URL, come back to Zscaler private access and click next. Single sign on URL is there. I know the entity ID from Zscaler internet access and I paste that there and I can upload the certificate that I downloaded. There we go. Status is enabled. It's a signed SP initiated request. It's post binding so it's not HTTP redirect and we can click save. Okay. So now if I come to my Safari browser 
what I'll do is I'll open up if I come to my Safari browser and open up a new tab and I'll go to admin.private.zscaler.com and what I'll do is I'll sign on using an IDP and enter my credential here Ryan at welshgeek.net what will now happen is I'll get redirected to Zscaler private uh, Zscaler internet access for authentication Zscaler internet access is going to authenticate me against my IDP there which is Azure AD so again I need to do multi-factor auth from Azure AD and I approve that I'm then signed into Zscaler internet access which federates my credential to Zscaler private access admin SSO and as you can see I'm now isolated accessing the container so this prevents direct access to my tenant um, in some respects it's not the best demo but it is a demo nonetheless if I now click um, let's click uh, log out and we'll close down that browser if I relaunch my Zscaler client and the client is connected to internet security I go to my Safari browser at this point I go to admin.private.zscaler.com again I will sign in using an IDP mryan at welshgeek.net again I'll be redirected to Zscaler internet access for authentication but this time I'm going through Zscaler internet access using Zscaler client connector so rather than being isolated I can access the application directly so this has demonstrated isolation based on URL filtering, isolation for Zscaler private access, browser-based access applications, and isolation using managed and unmanaged device credentials with Zscaler Identity Proxy.